everyone. Uh, I'm Wojtek. Uh, I'm from Poland, from company SH Next. And today I would like to tell you about how we implemented continuous deployment in one of our projects. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, interrupt and uh, ask me. Uh, I will be happy to answer. So, uh, uh, just uh, just uh, agenda. Uh, in the beginning, some uh, 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 theoretic theoretical introduction. Then uh, more uh, about workflow. So more about process, how how to work. Uh, uh, in the third part, about tools, what tools we use to implement uh, uh, continuous deployment. And uh, if, uh, the fourth uh, part, uh, I could say more, the most interesting, our failures and, uh, and uh, how we uh, manage it. Uh, with, with some tips for you, maybe useful uh, for you. Uh, and just a little, uh, during the third part, the tools, uh, there will be a small contest. Uh, so uh, uh, listen carefully, and uh, I have small prizes. Who like prizes? Prizes, awards. OK. So let's start with it. Oh. Almost, almost. Uh, the prices, uh, Polish sweetie, uh, came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From from milk and uh, and a lot of sweet. Okay. Uh, ther theoretical introduction. Let's let's start with uh, uh, what's the, the most typical way to deploy things. Uh, especially when you work with Scrum and with uh, sprints. You work uh, for a, a whole sprint, a week, two or three. You develop things and uh, when the time comes, uh, after the two weeks, for example, uh, you deploy. Yeah? And then, uh, and then uh, you uh, start to work on uh, next sprint, next things. Uh, and then you wait. If you, in the first day of the sprint, you made some uh, change, yeah? then you wait for two weeks to see it on production. Uh, this is OK, but uh, there is uh, another way, much uh, more uh, uh, nice for the developer, the continuous deployment. So you deploy a feature. When it's ready, uh, somebody is testing it, QA testing it, and uh, when it's uh, tested, you deploy it. So with this approach, you don't have to wait two weeks sometimes to, uh, to, ha to see the users that uh, they use your feature, but uh, you can see it just a few minutes later when it's finished. Uh, and you continuously do the same. So New feature, uh, uh, f closing it, finishing it, testing, deploying, and bam, you can see the results. Yeah, this is really uh, nice for a developer because uh, he feels that his work, yeah, it's uh, it's for users. Yeah, it's not somewhere in the repository uh, for. Uh, for, for for a demo uh, for two weeks, yeah, but uh, but uh, users use it. Uh, so yeah, today I will uh, tell you about uh, how we uh, implemented it for our internal project, RMS. Uh, in the left upper corner is uh, the name of it. It's application for managing. Uh, uh, candidates to our company. Uh, our company is about, uh, right now, 160 people. And uh, as you know, the uh, rotation of developers uh, is quite big, uh, bigger in, in, than in other uh, uh, jobs. Uh, 
uh, in SCX Next is uh, not that bad, but still we have uh, uh, thousands of uh, candidates that we have to manage uh, and to do it uh, efficiently. So we created a, a, a application for it. Uh, it's built with Django, uh, Postgres. On the front end side uh, is Angular. Uh, there are other nice uh, uh, libraries like Factory Boy. It's for uh, uh, managing of uh, fixtures for tests. R really nice li library, for example. Uh, yeah, and some other things. Uh, this is a team. Uh, it's uh, 25 uh, right now. Uh, I think even 26 developers work on it. Uh, some of those uh, only a few days, some of those, uh, some of those for many months. Uh, so uh, it's a quite uh, uh, big uh, thing. Uh, yeah, and workflow, how it works. Uh, starting with uh, GitHub, uh, code, is, uh, code is there. We have uh, just uh, uh, one main branch, the, the master, and uh, each feature is developed on new branch. Yeah, this is this is quite normal. Uh, we call it feature branch, and uh, when the feature is ready, we a developer create a pull request. So in here, it's nothing new. Uh, this is more uh, vis visualization of it. Yeah, so we have a new branch uh, created by a developer. He creates a feature. He adds a unit test uh, for it. Uh, creates a pull request. Uh, it goes through a code review. Uh, and there is a continuous integration, which check checks the tests. and. Uh, and the change uh, is uh, in the last uh, in the last uh, part on this slide. So, tester checks this this feature branch. So, developer don't have to in here merge it. Yeah, when it's uh, when it's okay. But uh, tester switch to this branch uh, and test the application on this branch. Uh, yeah, this is manual testing. Uh, and uh, when the tester uh, see that, yeah, it's working correctly uh, from the uh, business point of view, yeah, and there is no errors, uh, etc. So the tester uh, merge the branch, goes to the GitHub uh, and clicks the green button merge. If it's uh, if it's gray button, uh, it, it have to be uh, so it have to be uh, rebase. Uh, then ask developer to make rebase. Uh, when it's merged, automatically we backup uh, the production database. We deploy. Uh, tester clicks uh, just uh, one button to deploy, and then we have uh, a feature on a uh, on a production. Okay, the tools. So the contest. Contest uh, uh, is about yeah, it's about the tools. So there will be a bunch of tools, uh, and uh, if you know in which programming language the tool is uh, written, just uh, raise your raise your hand and uh, uh, say loudly what's the the name. Okay. Yeah. No, this one is, yeah, raise your hands. This was the uh, requirement. Jenkins. Uh, we have a Jenkins, yeah, it's written in, uh, in Java. Uh, uh, in here we have uh, four, uh, four uh, builds. So uh, we have PR testing. PR testing is a build where tester uh, can build his own instance on the branch that he wants. 
Yeah, so he goes to the GitHub, he copy the uh, branch ID, then he goes to the Jenkins, to the configuration, fill in to one of the fields the uh, branch ID and hit the build, build now. And after a few seconds, few minutes, uh, he have uh, his own uh, instance on the branch uh, and, he, and uh, he can test it. We have also uh, uh, staging. Uh, uh, this is an instance which is uh, not uh, uh, updated uh, uh, automatically. This is a more uh, instance when somebody uh, from, uh, for, uh, uh, for example, stockholder wants to see something. Uh, then the, we have uh, just uh, one instance uh, for uh, some kind of demos, etc. We have testing. This is a, a copy of staging, but it's uh, automatically uh, rebuilding when the um, branch is merged. And we have live. We have also built in the Jenkins for the live, uh, but it's not on the same server, the Jenkins, but it's on remote server. Uh, what's more about Jenkins? Uh, some uh, some uh, tips, uh, what you can use to uh, make it uh, more user friendly for Django. Uh, you can use plugins for Jenkins, uh, like uh, violation plugin to check pepates, uh, pilings. Uh, there is a nice plugin for uh, tasks that will be run after uh, the build was successful, successfully built. Uh, also, uh, ma matrix authorization is for better, uh, better uh, managing of, of what user can do. For example, if we have a live instance, yeah, we can uh, the build for live instance. We can uh, uh, assure that uh, this uh, that the life will be updated only if uh, only if uh, only for some kind of users some part of users github plugin is uh, f uh, have few uh, few things there but uh, we use their uh, uh, cre automatic creation of uh, tags uh, we can have also uh, packages on a uh, django site uh, the nose and uh, knows Xcover, which creates tests that are uh, understandable by, uh, by a Jenkins in a, in a uh, J -uni uh, S unit, uh, so Java, uh, XML, uh, unit tests format. Build out. Great. Yeah, of course, Python. Uh, in the project, we use build out, uh, not the uh, virtual end, because uh, we wanted to have uh, r uh, j j just uh, the same environment uh, wh wherever, whenever uh, we build it on uh, whatever server. Uh, and in, in this case, build out is better, it's more heavy, I could say. Than, uh, than virtual env, but uh, 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 you, can, uh, you can build many different sandboxes, many different uh, uh, environments on the same server, because the Jenkins that we have there, uh, uh, it have uh, 30 or 40 different applications there. Uh, and also in here you can use uh, uh, rece receipts, so this is, these are some kinds of uh, plugins for build out. Django receives th this one, creates a, a Django instance. Uh, receive template is for creating a configuration. Uh, so uh, you can create, for example, uh, local uh, configuration, local pi uh, for Django uh, from the build out. Uh, we have a receipt for UISG uh, for uh, creating, uh, compiling the USG, and Mr. Developer is a very nice uh, plugin for downloading uh, source code from 
uh, repositories like GitHub, Mercurial, uh, and uh, many different. Yeah, that's right. This is more. Almost, almost. Uh, this is about front end, yeah? Uh, so the JavaScript is, uh, 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 it, it, it's the main thing there. So uh, Bower and uh, Grant are, are uh, JavaScript. Uh, we use it uh, for managing the uh, whole front end side. Uh, so uh, in here you have also uh, uh, many useful uh, plugins that you can use. Fabric. Yeah. yeah, of course, Python. Great uh, tool for managing uh, remote tasks. Yeah, so uh, in this case, we use it uh, uh, from Jenkins uh, in the, in the uh, post process build action. So uh, the live build in Jenkins yeah, runs the tests, uh, uh, try other things like try to uh, migrate data with uh, South. With, uh, if everything is okay, yeah, then uh, we have the, the post build plugin in which we have just a one comment line uh, with, uh, which, which runs Fabric, uh, which uh, updates the uh, instance on remote server of the live server of the application. And this one is, uh, anybody knows? <laughs> yeah, raise your hand. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is uh, not uh, not uh, so well known uh, application, but it's really nice. Uh, we use it not in this project that I'm uh, talking uh, about, but in another project that we implemented the same workflow, uh, but in a, a little bit different way. Uh, gallery uh, is written in Python. Uh, and it's uh, uh, some. It combines some things from the uh, uh, Jenkins, so we can build. You can. Uh, you have a nice web interface to click. Uh, cl click things. Yeah, without m making comments. So uh, uh, even uh, testers which don't know how to develop can do that. Uh, and it's uh, also uh, use the remote tasks. So, so you can execute also the same task on uh, remote uh, remote servers. Okay, this was uh, this was uh, uh, the tools, and now the challenges. Uh, the first thing that we uh, encountered and uh, we implemented the continuous deployment was the restarts of Apache. So uh, on the on the server uh, that we had the Jenkins, we had the, the, our Django application was at, was on mod uh, Whiskey on the same Apache uh, that was serving the uh, that was serving the uh, Jenkins. So restart to restart uh, Django from the Jenkins, we had to restart Jenkins as well. Yeah. This was uh, stupid, so we uh, changed it. Uh, we don't use the system Apache, but we uh, compile uh, uh, USG for each instance, and we uh, restart only this one instance that we want. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, the pro tip uh, is a little bit a little bit tricky. Uh, because uh, be if you run build out, uh, in some uh, conditions you can lose the PID file, PID file. Uh, so uh, without the PID file, you will not be able to kill the previous instance. Yeah. 
So uh, to avoid it, uh, we use the master FIFO, so uh, uh, disk FIFO, and this is a, a tricky command to uh, restart it. If, uh, if the FIFO exists and uh, if uh, there is an instance which uh, listen to it. Uh, next one. Uh, we have we had a problem with uh, migration and uh, the data uh, in the in the uh, instances. So when the uh, when tester changed the branch uh, uh, um, for the feature branch, yeah, uh, the uh, Jenkins uh, ran the migration if if there is uh, any in the in this feature branch, but. Uh, Okay, th this is fine, but when tester uh, says uh, no, this this should work a uh, different way, yeah. So he have to uh, re revert to previous uh, to previous state, so he will be able to uh, run another uh, to test another feature branch. Uh, uh, so uh, so we had two choices or support back migrations uh, which is uh, which are quite fine uh, with uh, south but not in all cases when you uh, when it's automatically generated uh, migration then it's fine if it's uh, if it's uh, as written uh, by a developer then developer also have to uh, write a, a back migration uh, the solution in here uh, we, uh, when we uh, uh, creating a new instance on a new feature branch, we remove uh, the database and we copy data from the uh, staging. Uh, pro tip in here: Postgres don't have uh, a comment to uh, drop all tables. Uh, you have to drop uh, one by one. This is a uh, this is a comment that you can run to. Uh, uh, remove or all uh, tables uh, in, in in a loop. Uh, next one, uh, we had a problem uh, with uh, mi migrations, uh, the south migrations on uh, different branches with the same number. Yeah, and uh, when the uh, tester. Uh, merge the branches. Yeah, he don't see anything that uh, can happen uh, uh, incorrectly. Yeah, uh, if there are two uh, migrations with the same number after the mig uh, after the uh, merge, so uh, uh, we added just a f new file uh, version txt. Uh, with uh, with a uh, current uh, number, so if two branches have the same uh, changes the same uh, file at the same time, then uh, the, the second one will um, yeah there will be a conflict and the tester will see that he can't uh, uh, he can't uh, merge it. Developer have to rebase it and check the migration uh, as well. Uh, this, the south uh, migration wo works quite well, but only uh, in cases when two different migrations uh, uh, changes something in, in different places, yeah, in different tables. If two uh, migration works on the same table, uh, it doesn't work that well, and uh, we had uh, problems uh, in in these cases. Uh, last one, uh, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if you, uh, developer thinks that something can uh, go wrong, then it will definitely go wrong. Uh, so you have to be prepared for it, make backups, create tags, so you'll be able to revert to previous tag. Uh, and uh, we also had uh, just another rule for uh, testers uh, upgrade only in the office hours, so there will be uh, somebody in the office who will uh, help you. Uh, and of course, monitoring 
uh, uh, for example, New Relic Nagils. Okay, this is this is the uh, last one. Uh, you you, uh, you could wondering why Jenkins, why we want Java there, why Bower Grunt uh, with JavaScript, why not use everything with uh, Python? Because we wanted to make it easy and uh, low cost. What does it mean? We already had a Jenkins there for continuous integration. We already had uh, Bower Grunt. Uh, we already have Fabric. Yeah, so it was more about uh, reconfiguration of everything and changing the uh, workflow, the procedures for uh, developing code, not to, you know, uh, rewrite all the uh, things around the project. Uh, so we use this uh, this uh, kind of tools, uh, and it works quite well for our non-critical application. So. Uh, this is, uh, as I said, internal application for managing uh, candidates. Uh, and if we had some problems, uh, we had the downtime for a few minutes, and it, it wasn't a problem for us. Uh, what the benefits that we filled very well? New features faster in production. So uh, users, uh, in this case, the uh, recruitment team, uh, could uh, use it uh, after hours, not after weeks. Uh, and also developers had a, a faster feedback from them. Uh, also, uh, less boring stuff for developers, more uh, things for testers. Uh, and so we also feel that uh, uh, the, the, the feedback is uh, good. And just a uh, last, uh, last reminder, remember about M Murphy's Laws. Uh, everything can break, uh, so uh, be aware of it and try to, uh, try to uh, think uh, one step forward. Thank you very much. This, this, is, this is it. We have time for some questions, so please raise your hand. Hi, um, I'd just like to say thank you for the talk. It's very cool. Um, learned lots of things. You were saying about um, PR testing. I'm not familiar with PR testing. What's PR testing? PR testing. Uh, it's pull pull. Uh, this this is a name for pull request testing. So uh, in this case, uh, the instance works on the same branch that is uh, in the pull request. Thank you for the talk. And in continuous deployment, the idea is that they automate the whole process and just putting away all the human interventions. And from what I see, you have deliberately put humans there, like someone is uh, clicking on the deploy button or something like that. Uh, is this a problem which you have faced when, when we are fully automating the process? We have seen lots of problems and we require the human intervention or maybe it was that we are not really there for the continuous deployment and we have some things to do still. So. Uh, yeah, so uh, in this case, uh, the, 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 uh, I will just get back to it. Uh, yeah, we are talking about uh, this one, yeah? So this step is not automatic. Uh, the, the tester have to click, just click one button Built life. Uh, it's because uh, we want the uh, live builds in the office hours. Uh, so uh, why? Because application is not that used uh, out of office hours. The main uh, users are in a recruitment team, 
uh, which is also in the office hours, yeah? This is one thing, and the second thing, if something, something will break, there will be admin or other developer which can take a look on the logs uh, or, or uh, run the revert script. But yes, it could be, uh, could be automated in here. Hello. Um, how, many th how many times happens that uh, y y you've got uh, broken uh, uh, production? Because as, as, as I can see, uh, there is only one level of, of, uh, of uh, human testing. Uh, and for example, in, in, in project where, uh, where, um, where, where I develop, uh, we, we have, uh, I think, at least uh, uh, three levels of, 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 of testing by, uh, by, uh, by, by humans. Yeah, so uh, we had, I don't know exactly how many deploys we had. Uh, I, could, uh, I could say about uh, 100 deploys, uh, uh, which uh, only few, uh, maybe five, uh, were broken. In only one case, we had to... Uh, 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 remove, drop the database, and uh, 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 yeah, create it from the backup. So uh, it's not that uh, often, uh, but still, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's better to to uh, have it uh, some kind of uh, uh, procedure to uh, get it back. Any more question? Sorry, just following on from Antoine's question there, did you actually automate that process of the rolling back process, or did you just do that by hand? Uh, yeah, so uh, this is a more uh, bash script, uh, which uh, uh, check out the, uh, not the newest tag, but the previous tag. Uh, runs a build out, restarts the instance, uh, and this this is it. So only a few comments in the bash script, but uh, you don't have to remember about it. You have just a one script to run it. S but uh, only some admin or, or developer have to go with SSH and and do it. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I would like to know. Uh, how can you? How are you managing your infrastructure? Are you using configuration management? Uh, the application, uh, uh, the application, live application, uh, the Jenkins uh, uh, and uh, other instances are on uh, our own servers in a basement of our office. Uh, in in this project. So we in here we had uh, full access, full. Uh, we could do uh, whatever we wanted on the servers. Any more question? Okay, so maybe I will just. Uh, this is a contact for me if you want to uh, uh, talk with me. And just uh, uh, one thing, uh, this is uh, my company. Uh, we have uh, uh, many projects interesting. Uh, if, you, if you want to move to Poland and work with us, uh, just uh, uh, let me know. Thank you. <laughs>